Hey, what's up everybody? It is your girl Jojo and I'm here with a review for Ready to Love. This is season three, episode two. I hope y'all are doing good today. Um, just got done watching the show not too long ago and um, I'm on a study break, so I figured I'd go ahead and do the review. That's all I do, y'all. Study, eat, go to the commissary. I really don't be doing nothing. I don't hang out. I'm very one track minded. I gotta get this part of my life done. So I'm very, very focused on what I need to do here. Okay, so <clears throat> moving on to the Ready to Love, uh, uh, I was about to say reunion, child. Ready to Love review. This is Ready to Love, the last resort. So that means everybody is going to be living on the premises, on the filming premises, something that they've never done before. And um, judging from the trailer, there's going to be some pluses to doing this, but there's also going to be some negatives to doing this. And I'm going to tell y'all what my predictions are for the season once we get to the end of the review. Um, I will be looking down at my notes several times throughout the throughout the review, so just excuse me. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we start out with all the couples getting there. It's just like normal. It's a mixer. Everybody flirting. Everybody flexing, putting their best foot forward. Um, Kofani and Joy are the first two people to get there. And, you know, they have a little conversation before everybody gets there. And then people start arriving. I'll have to say that my favorite entrances, <laughs> at least the ones that were filmed anyway, was Winter. She looked like a cute little pumpkin when she came in and she just exuded she has a confidence to her that doesn't come off as snooty or snobby. And I, I'm just feeling it. I like it. Um, who else? Uh, David had his country boy swag. I loved it. Um, I love Denise's like flowy items because most of the women had on fitted clothes. And I feel like you can still be very sexy and very feminine with flowy items. It's all about the way that you wear it. And then she had that fan. I don't know. I was I was feeling it because I'm I'm kind of a flowy dresser as well. I gave up the tight, you know, once I started gaining weight. <laughs> I gave up tight. Um who else uh, did I like their their entrance? Jay, I liked his. And yeah, everybody looked good though. Everybody looked good. So um, just moving around of what we noticed during the show. Now it's a whole bunch of people, so I'm sure it's going to be stuff that I'm going to leave out. Um, Alicia. Now we've been worried about Alicia, right? <laughs> um, just judging from the stuff that she said during her uh, cast, during the cast special. But Alicia is just one of those women. She actually reminds me of some girls I know. Um, she's sexual and she doesn't hide it. You know, you she she look you up and down while she's talking to you. Uh, she lets you know what she like. And she's one of those women that strikes me as the type that uh, knows what she wants in the bedroom and outside of it. And either you can deal with how she is or you can't. And that's really <laughs> just the bottom line. Um, I know other women wouldn't move the way that Alicia moved, but it's been working for her, I guess. Um, and that's what she chooses to do. But I still feel like Alicia is going to be the one who get some stuff started on this show. And I just feel like it's going to be a blow up. And it's going to be something that Alicia did. Because <laughs> she seems like a handful to me. Uh, the next person I wanted to talk about is Adriana. Now, Adriana is the youngest on the show. Um, for some for some women by a couple years and for some women by, you know, more years. But Adriana comes in and she feels like some of the women feel threatened by her because she's younger. And Adriana, baby, let me tell you this. Uh, you, you, you look, you do look younger, but you don't look that much younger than everybody else. I mean, at most, maybe four to five years, some people maybe more, but you're not like, you're not 25. You're not 23. I think she's 31. So yeah, you know, once you get over a certain age range, like every, you just kind of get lumped in as a group, <laughs> I guess, or maybe I just think like that. I kind of lump certain age ranges together as just one group you know you just are who you are and nobody really cares that you a couple of years off somebody else's age so I'm just like Adriana girl ain't nobody I mean I guess maybe some of the women might have been threatened but I just would have been like you know it kind of just is what it is like you're not always gonna be the youngest in the group obviously they know that but anyway that was that was Adriana's spill Tommy comes in and he 
tells the group that somebody is going to be getting eliminated and you guys get to know each other, put your best foot forward, all this, that, and the third. Talking about, you know, I met my queen, my queen 33 years. I've been with my queen 33 years and they clapping and cheering. And I'm just like, give it up, Tommy. Because one of the people in the comments let me know that you ain't been with the queen. You've been with the queen 33 years, but you have not been married Okay, you pulled the wool over my eyes, Tommy. I thought y'all been married for 30 some years. Y'all, nephew Tommy just married this woman in 2016. Now, they, now think about the 33, subtract 2016 to 2020, and that'll let you know how long that relationship was before they got married. Now, that might be something they agreed to, but all I'm saying is nephew Tommy neglected to tell us because I've never heard him say that. Have y'all ever? Maybe I missed it. But I've never heard him say that on the show. Now, he might have said it over there with Steve and them. But I ain't never heard him say it on this show. But okay. I mean, y'all been together. So I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it alone. But shout out, shout out to you who let me know. All right. I might have to throw your name across the screen because I like to give credit where credit is due. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Nephew Tommy talking about give it up. Don't clap for him. I was like, stop clapping. Denise felt like Rasheed came off as cocky. I didn't feel like Rasheed came off as cocky. I felt like Rasheed came off as, when he said he was rusty and he was a little rough around the edges when it came to dating, it showed. Okay, he came off as, you know, a little bit, not uncomfortable, but it seemed like his moves were from another time. You know, like he just hasn't caught up to how we're dating today is the best way to put it. He kind of was using lines from that may have worked for him back in, I don't know, when was he dating? The early 90s? I, I, it just, it seemed like he was using some lines that was good pre-divorce, but they don't work after divorce. But he was trying, right? He just came off as nervous to me. Um, speaking of Rashid, Adriana ghosted Rashid some, <laughs> some time back. And so she was very nervous when she saw him out there because it's always bad when you see somebody you ghosted. That's why you shouldn't ghost, all right? I've ghosted, I've ghosted once or twice, you know, like really in my 20s though. I, I really stopped doing that the older I got, but I've ghosted once or twice and it's really not a good thing to do. You know, just be honest and say if you're not feeling it and and move on because you never really know when you're going to see him again. So she saw Rashid and it was cool. They ended up having a conversation off to the side about um, where they were in their relationships at the time that they went on their dates and um, never really talked about the ghosting per se, but just basically why at the time it wasn't a good time for either one of them. He was focused more so on his son and she had just gotten out of a relationship. And, you know, Rashid, even though he got ghosted, he, he seemed like he wanted to give it a go again <laughs> with Adriana. So um, the brother is resilient, if nothing else. Now, let's see who else. KJ. Y'all know KJ came oiled up and greased up. Or well, is there any other way to come? All right. He ain't got no shirt on underneath the blazer, per usual as well. And um, he seemed to have some type of spark with, what is her name? Naya. Um, and oddly enough, I guess, uh, not oddly, ironically enough, um, both K, is it KJ? Yeah, K, both KJ and Naya have biological clocks that are ticking loudly, okay? KJ say his man, biological clock is ready. Naya's clock is ready. You know, she ready for somebody to put the juice in her, remember? And um, get her babied up. So they both got on pink. I said, hey, this might be a sign, okay? To the point where uh, they done took their shoes off and they done decided they gonna get grounded, okay, <laughs> with the earth. I'm not laughing, because I know some of y'all deep out there and y'all probably do that. But I'ma just let y'all know, the us folk out here in the country, we've been taking our shoes off for years. <laughs> and um, I don't know if we grounded with the earth or not, but honey, we call when we take our shoes off, we call that a foot race that's about to happen. <laughs> Whether it's going to be out there on the concrete or whether it's going to be through the grass. And we'll keep our shoes off for hours and hours and hours and be out there in the grass. So maybe we've been grounded. But they out there getting grounded and, you know, coming together. I'm sure they did both talk about maybe off camera that they both want children. But I think that's a great conversation for the two of them to have. They seem to rock, though. They seem to. Okay, they had a little vibe going. 
Uh, Simone. Simone is hilarious to me. I, I already know some of y'all don't like Simone. I just can feel it through the computer screen. I know some of y'all don't like Simone. I thought that Simone was funny uh, when she said that it was going to be a sausage party and she was famished. I laughed. Uh, <laughs> when she got with David and uh, was asking David, did he have a passport? And he said he was going to DR. And she asked him in Spanish, I believe, if he was going to get some hoes or some, some prostitutes. <laughs> And he was just like, uh, no. And she was like, oh, okay, because I used to live in DR. And he said, oh, okay, did they think you were one of the prostitutes? <laughs> Tried to be funny, Simone. <laughs> David had jokes. He had jokes back for you. But it turns out later on, David is not feeling Simone because uh, he just don't think her conversation is all that kiki and funny, even though she was trying to be cute. Um, who else? Danny. Okay, it's... It's a couple of people that I'm worried about on the show, and Danny is one of them. Danny, she can't. Now she don't scare me like old girl did last season. Y'all remember the cute little dark skinned girl that was always real emotional? She don't scare me like she, the other girl did. But Danny, you can't be crying almost every time you get in a confessional. It makes me wonder if you are really ready for this experience like are you going to be able to control your emotions so i was a little worried about danny because you know this is the second time she's been close to tears in the confessionals and then um sam is that his name sam I, i'm 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 worried about sam too um sam he, how can i say this i don't think he's a a, a mean guy i'm not mean i don't think he is trying to be standoffish i just don't think he has the personality type to be on a dating show i don't have a personality type to be on a dating show i know i come on here and i talk to y'all and i'm just as you know conversational and talkative but that's because i'm not in a room with y'all i'm talking to y'all from the privacy of the room that i'm in and there's nobody in here and that makes it easier if i was in a group of people sitting with a group of people right now i wouldn't be able to have this kind of candor because i don't have that kind of confidence in large groups so i would have been the one off to the side uh, about to just you know run and want to get up out of there if i can because i wouldn't have been comfortable which is why i would never go on a dating show which is why i think sam probably shouldn't have been on a dating show so when he talks to the women he's very monotone it is kind of rambly and all the women are just kind of looking at him like he's nice, but something is not all the way there. And then he's saying how he grew up and his his mom always called him a prince. And now he's a prince and he got to become a king. And I mean, I got what he was saying, but it was just like, what are you? You know how you, you understand what somebody is talking about, but you wondering why they talking about it? Like, okay, I got you, but why? Why, Sam? Danny and Sam, I can honestly say, I was worried about them early on. And uh, we'll talk about Danny and Sam later. Okay, so who else? I don't, you know, I feel bad because I always forget this girl's name. Um, I forgot it when I did the cast special too. I had to look up her name then and I, I don't even, I'm not even going to look it up now. But the girl who's been celibate for uh, two years She's having a conversation with one of the men and she's telling them that she's been celibate for two years. Baby, that's what we don't do. Coming for somebody who was celibate for five. Okay, you know, you're talking about two, five, right? Um, you don't tell these men that how long you've been celibate. And the reason why is because while you probably feel like it makes you look wholesome and like you're a woman who's very focused about what you want to do and all of that is good all of that is good and celibacy definitely clears your mind it definitely puts you in the right frame of mind when it comes to dating and what you it does it does do that but men don't they not looking at it like that they're not looking at how wholesome you are all they looking at is a challenge okay a challenge and that's not for every man some men some men will appreciate it in a certain way but there's a group of men who are only going to see it as a challenge and you want to avoid those. So don't put out there immediately how long you've been celibate. Wait on that information, okay, till y'all been around each other for some time. Then lay it on. Then watch how they react, <laughs> okay? So um, that was that. Denise. <sighs> now y'all know I don't cuss on these reviews, but Denise... Who the hell told you to uh, throw your legs up on that man like that? <laughs> I mean, 
mean, she was over there on the swings with Kelfani. And as soon as they sit down, this sister just, she take up, she throw her legs up over him. And she was like, I'm going to just do this. You know, I'm just sitting. We going to talk. And he just like, oh, oh okay. I said, now, nah, Denise, ladies. Now, y'all know I love my sisters, but we got to do better than this now. I know times is hard. It's been a long time. You might not have dated. You may not have had your regular maintenance. You know, your coochie be throbbing. I know all of that. But we got to be in control of ourselves when we on these dates. You can't be throwing your legs up on these men like that. We don't know them. Put your legs down and close them. <laughs> she had them closed, though. They wouldn't open. But y'all know what I mean. So anyway, they, they're talking. And they seem to have a nice little vibe. And I expected them to. They're both athletic. They both kind of work in that, that workout field and probably very conscious of their health and their bodies and so that might work that might work and he looked like he was feeling her she looked like she was feeling him I did think now y'all can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't know when he asked her about her last dating experience she told them that she was in an abusive relationship that almost ended up ending her life I appreciated her for keeping it real but do y'all would y'all reveal that much um to somebody y'all just met or am I looking at this wrong? Am I looking at it like is it because it's a dating show, should you, I guess, should not rush, but should you go ahead and get stuff out early? I couldn't figure out if I was looking at that wrong, but I don't think I would tell that um, initially to somebody. I, I don't know. It just seems like a vulnerable spot, but maybe so. Maybe so. I might be looking at that wrong. Y'all can let me know what y'all thought. So then... Later on, I see her with her leg stone up again. This time she getting a foot massage. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay, I do love a foot massage. But Anthony over there rubbing this girl's feet, I'm just like, Anthony, Anthony, you don't know this sister? Denise, didn't I just tell you to get your legs off people? <laughs> so now she over there getting a foot massage with Anthony, and they got a nice little vibe going on too. I was just like, child, this is just, I mean, y'all get... <sighs> Let's move on. Raymond. So Raymond is running around. Raymond is hilarious to me, first of all. But Raymond running around and he name dropping. You know what I'm saying? You know, when I'm back when I was playing guitar for, you know, G Wine Tank. Cause I did play the guitar, you know, for G Wine and Tank. Oh yeah, man. See, I know how it is. Back when I was playing the guitar for G Wine and Tank. Everybody has got it now. We got the picture. Raymond was playing what? The guitar for Genuine and who? Tank. <laughs> so after he gets done telling everybody that, I think it was Simone or maybe Naya, but somebody ends up asking him, you know, back when you was doing all of that, you know, was you in them streets? Okay, <laughs> was you out there and, you know, making the panties drop just like they were? Although, Genuine was married to uh, Solo. Wasn't she? What's his name? Soleil. So, yeah, what's that woman name that Genuine got all them kids with? But, um, yeah, was you out there doing what they was doing? And he was just like, yeah, I was with women. <laughs> you know, I was getting women. And I like the fact that Raymond is at least honest about it. Um... But Raymond tells us that that was in his past. And just like they don't want to be judged by their past, he don't want to be judged for his past. And let me tell you this, Raymond, that's true. Okay, we should give grace to people. But um, in the words of Drea Michelle, well, what we used to tell Drea, you can't, you can't delete your whole past. And it is what it is. You had a whole past, yet you don't get to delete it. It's there. And uh, we understand, though, that you don't want to be judged by it. I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, but you do got these kids, though. <laughs> and even though you had them in the past, of your past actions, they are very much present. So one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, we can't forget about them. And so uh, some of the women are a little put off that he has five children. Others are, I can't really tell. But um, he talks to Adriana and he tells us he likes younger women because younger women, they just understand him, right? They just are different with him. And I'm just like, yeah, because we don't know no better. <laughs> not like that, y'all. We know better, but I don't know. It could just be because some of us are not taking, it might be they don't take Raymond that serious. You know, if a woman is 30 and 
you're 52 they they really might not take you as seriously so that might be why they don't care um it could be a number of reasons and we might just be more laid back i can admit that we might just be more laid back but if i met raymond i mean i wouldn't judge him either but i don't know if i would be looking at him as a serious mate and that's because of the five kids i can't i can't <laughs> Maybe that's too many children for me but you know some women some women like it you know got a little family going already might work for them okay so i'm trying to see if that's it all right so that's pretty much it for the, the meet and greets and y'all can let me know what i left out so in the end he talks to the women he talks to the men who you feeling who you're not feeling um seems adriana pretty high on everybody's list denise's name is mentioned both for the good and the bad <laughs> um winter seems a lot of the guys like winter simone is on the fence so overall okay who ends up being in the top the top the bottom for the women is danny and simone but it is danny who ends up going home now i was really sad because their reason for sending danny home because they felt like she was the homie but I don't I never understand that don't guys want somebody that they can be themselves around and they can feel like she's a friend as well as a lover because Danny wasn't coming off as like the homie like dapping you up and playing video games she wasn't coming off like masculine you know what I'm saying she just was coming off cool and I, I don't know I just I don't yeah I, I don't know I didn't see it I didn't see Danny as not being engaged and interested but she got sent home and, and it seemed like she was cool with it. I don't know if Danny was fully ready for what this experience was going to bring. Um, and, you know, kudos to her for even putting her heart out there and coming. But I hope she meets a really nice guy because she does seem like a really, really sweet woman. Now, for the men, in the bottom we have Sam and who was the other one? Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> and Raven definitely doesn't want to go home but uh Sam is the one who ended up going home and I already predicted that that was going to happen because he just didn't like I said earlier guys it's, it's people who should be on dating shows and it's people who shouldn't and he's just one of those people that I don't think was prepared for what this experience would have been maybe I, I don't know I don't know what kind of show would be good for Sam but not this one necessarily um, he didn't even seem interested sometimes. It was just, I don't know. But I did feel sad for him because he looked disappointed. So I felt I felt sad. Well, baby, you know, you got two baby mamas. Just try it with one of them. See if it might shake. Don't, don't learn from Raymond. Okay, get with one of these baby mamas. <laughs> yeah, y'all, but that was really it. Um, they showed some of the clips from the rest of the season. And this is what I think is going to end up happening. Um, normally... When they're on the show, they go on dates, they mix and mingle, they do what they do, but they do it without having eyes on one another, without being in the same space. They're in the same city, but they're not in the same space. And so I predict that the women are going to really struggle with these connections being right in their face. I mean, just think about all the seasons where it's only been two other seasons, but think about the other two seasons where they would be in the same house and how you would see how everybody vibed for the first time. And then you would be upset. Like you knew they were going on dates with these people, but now it's all in your face. <sighs> yeah, that, that, that's going to be difficult. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I could handle it because I couldn't, but then again, I'm not on a reality show, okay? It's going to be like college, really. Y'all know how on college people would be messing around with multiple folks on the campus and y'all get all in the same room and you can tell who messing with who and then stuff will blow up and somebody fighting in the bathroom. Anyway, <laughs> another time in my life. So, yeah, I just think that's what's going to end up happening. Um... It looks like some other stuff is going to come up, but I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to wait to talk about that. But anyway, y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the episode, and I'll see y'all for the next one. Bye.